Hey everybody, this is Chris from Killer Arcade Games. Today I'm going to show you guys how to download, install, and hopefully get to playing Techno Parrot. Techno Parrot lets you run newer arcade games like the ones that you'd find in current arcades, the big giant arcade cabinets. For example, I'm going to show you how to launch H2 Overdrive today and Dirty Driving. Both of those are arcade games that came out within the last 10 years or so. They're essentially going to run like PC games using this emulator, which is great, so you'll probably need a decent graphics card. Now when I say decent, I pretty much just mean anything not built onto your PC already. So if you don't have anything other than onboard graphics, you're probably going to have trouble running some of these games. Now I am running an HP Elite Desk 800. I do have a GeForce GT 1030 in here. I, I will link to all that in the description. That's been able to let me run a lot of games so far, but there are some I'm sure this won't run. Anyway, let's dive into how to get this installed. First of all, go to technoparrot.com. I will leave a link to it in the description so you don't have to type it in if you'd like. Then click Downloads. Scroll down, and this is gonna look a little fishy, but um, just click the click here to download version, blah, blah, blah. This is the part that looks fishy. I never had any of these warnings. So once you click this link, it's gonna take you to Mega. And then on Mega, you can just click download. I've already downloaded it because it actually takes a little time to download. And I didn't wanna record all that. So we can close all this once we've got it done. And then you need to go into your downloads folder, which is full of uh, emulation junk. This is kind of like my test computer. Okay, you need to go in and create. I always like to create a new folder for it. I'm gonna put it on the C drive. You can put it wherever you'd like. It just means you need to find it. Um, Okay, let's let it make a name for us. I'm going with Techno Parrot and the version number, which will change. Go ahead and let that extract. Close your extractor. Go back to your C drive, which I'm already there. Find the folder it just made. And inside of here is your emulator. Now, what I would recommend doing after that is just go ahead and load Techno Parrot UI. Now, as soon as you do this, it's going to ask you to set emulation settings. Click OK. And here comes the fun. I'm gonna go ahead and click no on this. Since this is the first time running it, let's get all the updates out of the way first. Click no, get that out of the way. And as you can see over here, we have lots of updates. So you, what you need to basically do is just click update. It'll finish that one. Go to the next one, click update. It'll finish. Go to the next one, update. And keep doing this like crazy. Now once it's done, it wants you to restart it. So click yes. There we go, so it'll load itself again. And once again, lots of updates. So go ahead and click update. Cool, that's successful. Let's keep doing this. I think the reason they don't let you get the updates in one big bundle is because they want you to pay for it. So you can do like a Patreon thing and probably get the most up-to-date version if that's what you prefer, but we're going with the free option for now. Okay, so it must be up to date and for some reason it does sit up there. If you can't see the top when you're doing yours, reach up and pull it down. Um, let's go ahead and figure out how to launch a, or how to add a game. First of all, you're going to have to download a game and I can't tell you how or where to do that because that's illegal. So what I have done is shown you where my games are. I have a few of these already. What will probably happen is you will get them in a zip file like this. You do need to extract them leave the name of the file uh, or the folder alone it really doesn't matter much but i always leave it alone and then you'll be left with what looks like this folders with all kinds of stuff it almost looks like pc games and it really doesn't mean anything to you necessarily you don't have to do anything in these folders just know where they are um, in my case i already have techno parrot running so i'm just going to show you how i did this but i would recommend making a roms folder for techno parrot probably in the same area you made your uh, techno parrot install so Let's go back to Techno Parrot, which is right here. I'm gonna click these three bars up here. I'm gonna add a game. You're gonna find the game you wanna add. In this case, let's go with Dirty Driving, because I have that file. You click Add Game. And then from there, you need to go down and click Game Settings. Up here is the game executable. This is where you're gonna tell it how to launch the game or where to launch the game. In my case, mine is installed in a very odd spot. I believe at Techno. I have a ROM folder, which is what you should probably make. DD, which would be Dirty Driving. And this is the file you need to launch. Now, some games have different options. S Daemon or All Files. I'm just gonna go with S Daemon. All right, so now that it knows where to launch the game from, it's really all you need to do. Now, if you want your game to launch windowed, each game has all these settings. Uh, they're all different usually, not all of them, but a lot of them are different. 
You can have auto acceleration, whatever. I just leave it alone usually. And for some reason, it's still not showing up properly, so I have to drag it up. It may be the monitor I'm looking at this on. Uh, hopefully it looks normal to you guys. Click Save Settings. So from here, you can now test it. Click Launch Game, and let's see what happens. This is a normal thing. You'll see uh, the... You can actually turn this off, and I'll show you how to do that. But that's a normal thing to see. Now it is going into what is essentially the arcade game booting up. And we'll let that finish just to make sure it worked. All right, there we go. We have it ready to go, but you still need to set your controls. So hit escape on your keyboard. That'll end the emulation, take you back to Techno Parrot. So to set the dirty driving controls, make sure dirty driving is clicked over here. Go down, click controller setup. And from here, just click in that box, press whatever key you want it to be. In my case, I just have a keyboard handy. Crank up, we'll go with up on the key button, why not? You just keep pressing buttons as you go. You click in there, press whatever you want it to be, whether it's a controller, a steering wheel, what have you. Boom. And then you need to go down and click Save Settings. That way, when you launch the game, you can now control the game. One other thing I need to note is, now if you're using arcade controls or keyboard or anything other than an Xbox controller, leave direct input on there. Now, if you're using an Xbox controller, you're gonna need to click X input and that will allow it to pick up your inputs. So basically what I'm trying to say is, say you're in this menu, the controller menu, you're trying to set your buttons, but it's not picking up on the buttons. Go back, go to game settings and change this to X input and see if that fixes your problem. Now, say if you're running this in an arcade cabinet and you don't want that ugly command window to pop up, say if you're launching it from LaunchBox, I would strongly suggest you go to the three dots up here Click that, go down to settings. And in settings, click this box that says hide console windows and that will hide the command prompt. Click save and let's test it by launching dirty driving. You shouldn't see it anymore. It'll take a little bit of time to load, but once it loads up, everything's good to go. Just for fun, let's add one more game to show you guys one more time. Click add game. Let's go do H2 Overdrive this time. One of my new favorites, this is a uh, I have a whole video on the channel about this game if you want to check it out. Just uh, look in the description if I remember to add it. If not, check uh, just check the channel. It's a pretty recent video. All right, we need to go to game settings again. Go up to the game executable line, click in there. And we need to go back to our TechnoParrot ROMs folder. Open the H201, look for the S daemon, double click that, and you're good to go there. Again, check your settings here just in case. Click save settings. And we can launch H2 Overdrive now. And there you go. So I've now launched my version of Techno Parrot that I've been running on this PC for a while. Just know that when you do launch yours after a while, if it is connected to the internet, you're probably going to get more of these updates popping up, which is a good thing. Um, but I would still recommend if you're using this in an arcade cabinet, this is something I always recommend. Always leave your PC that you're using for your arcade games offline you don't want updates interrupting your games and if as long as everything's working fine you really don't need updates so the main reason i launched my version is just to show you there's some differences in launching games for example the mario kart one is a little bit different in order to launch mario kart i had to find this file which is mk underscore agp3 underscore final dot exe so it wasn't just the typical s daemon file and luckily techno parrot knows that so when you do open it to look for it you can see down here it is looking for mkfinal.exe uh, rather than the S daemon. It's not like you'll run into too many problems when looking for these files. There's a few of these games I was not able to run. Star Wars Battle Pod, for example, it actually launches curved as if you're playing the actual Star Wars Battle Pod arcade cabinet. There is a patch for that. I wish I could tell you how to do that, but I've actually forgotten. Now I will be installing this on my Star Wars Arcade 1UP cabinet in the future. So just give me a little bit of time. Once I have to do it again, maybe I'll make a video on that if you guys are interested in it. And I will leave you all the files you need for that patch. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hopefully I will have that video out within the next couple months. But for now, I don't, I can't remember how I did it exactly. It's just a patch file. Once I get it figured out, I will upload the patch files. I will not upload the game file, unfortunately. I can't share it with you legally. But I can share you guys the patch files so you're not risking downloading viruses and all that. But once it launches, it actually looks really good, especially once you patch it to run in 16 by 9 mode. 
Hopefully this video was helpful, guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them, but I will say right now that I am not a techno parrot genius or anything. I've done very limited playing with this so far. One last thing to note is Battle Pod seems to struggle with this graphics card. I'm actually going to buy a higher end graphics card when I do put it in the Star Wars Arcade 1UP cabinet. So just know that going in. It does work, but you can tell it's struggling a little bit to run the game. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And please consider subscribing for more arcade content, more emulation content, tutorials, arcade 1UP stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. I'll see you guys on the next video.